So, this picture up here perfectly describes where America is compared to every other country when it comes to education, behind everyone else. Now, many people have theories and reasons and examples for why, but a lot of them that I have read kind of go towards blaming the teachers. And that is why many teachers have vocally expressed their disdain for their current position as a public educator. According to a survey completed by Ernest Bremer and Jama McMahon Landers of the University of Tennessee, some of the top stressors of public, public educators excuse me, are their pay, satisfaction, and lack of support. Teachers are the most powerful tool we have in the world. They help prepare tomorrow's leaders. They are the reason why many of us are sitting in our seats right now. Think about that one teacher that just made such a big difference in your life, who went above and beyond every other teacher that you had to make sure that you succeeded. Now, think of that teacher spending extra hours after school with no pay and not receiving full support from their faculty because of a difference in views and decisions. And think of the lack of satisfaction that they have coming every day to work. It's with that information we must revamp how we treat our public educators. We must have better pay options for teachers and strive to have more support given to all teaching faculties so that job satisfaction is greater than it is now. One of the biggest problems teachers face is the lack of support from administration and from parents. The American Psychological Association released a journal by Tori de Angeles in February of 2012 outlining beneficial support tactics for teachers. The journal states that teachers feel like their power and decisions are being overruled heavily, and in doing so, they see no need to continue working in those situations. According to Dr. Richard Ingersoll of the University of Pennsylvania, 30% of teachers quit after just three years of working, while up to half of them quit after just five years of working. Dr. Isaac Prolinsky, the Dean of Education of the University of Miami, says that support for teachers is very important. And once they are placed in the classroom, they are lonely and kind of isolated. Teachers, he says that teachers need the same kind of support that doctors receive who are doing their residency during their training and practices. However, Prolinsky says that teachers normally don't get that attention. What is it? What is one way of fixing this situation, you may ask? And how can we give teachers the support they deserve? Well, Dr. Polinsky of the, yeah, well, at Dr. Polinsky's university, excuse me, he implemented a mentoring program uh, for novice teachers, for beginner teachers, that started in 2001. And only one of the 600 teachers that have passed through that mentoring program have quit after three years. Uh, Dr. Jane Connolly at the University of California says that the key to build organizations where expectations are high, sorry, the key is to build organizations where expectations are high and su support and success is just as strong. So now in building that organization, you want to make sure that you are compensating all members of that part as well. So I want you to raise your hand if you have ever heard the statement, you don't become a teacher because of money or something along the effects of that. Exactly. So, current teachers are feeling the brunt of that quote and are saying that they want that to change. Uh, now, many people feel that the never-ending debate of teacher pay and compensation will have no real ending, but the biggest factor we should focus on is how we as a country help pay for school and how we help fund our teachers. According to a New York Times article released in December of 2013, Canada leads the world in school funding for their teachers and their schools because unlike the US, they do not focus so heavily on property tax as funding. So with using property tax as funding, we as the United States for low poverty schools and low poverty districts, that school and those teachers won't receive as much funding as well as won't receive as much pay and vice versa for wealthier districts. They'll receive more funding and they'll receive more pay. So you may be wondering, how do you expect us to replicate something like this here in the United States? Well, Canada has kind of come up with a very simple measure. They are using a province-level funding formula, which basically allows them to determine how much each school district will need based on a logarithm and all that fun math stuff that I don't like to do. Uh, 
And they look at the needs, the students, faculty, and basically all these different criteria and factors inside each school district. And then from there, they find out how to evenly distribute the tax money amongst all of those districts. But while, but while many countries still try to figure out that formula and what works for them, we need to start focusing on our biggest stressor that public educators have, and that is the lack of support and the lack of satisfaction. So why does anyone go into any form of a profession? The satisfaction. If satisfaction is lacking, we, it will lead people to think again about why they're in this line of work. Sadly, this is happening for many teachers across the world. An online journal by Brian Basayo looks at the overall job satisfaction many public educators have. Now, many teachers give their job 110% every day, but sadly suffer at the end of the day, sometimes asking themselves why, and contemplating if this is something that they really want to do or why they even went into the field. Basayo says that teacher satisfaction has dropped 15 points since 2009 to 44% overall satisfaction, the lowest it has been in 20 years. Vasayo says that many factors of teachers dissatisfaction can be from failure, social problems, disrespect from students, parents, lack of support from administration, and the list just goes on and on. Vasayo says that we should give teachers every outlet possible to try and fix their issues. Teachers should be given self-reflective practices in an environment which recognizes and acquired knowledge. Districts should also have developmental seminars designed to be a challenge for experienced teachers and also serve as a mentoring program for newer teachers. So in conclusion, many teachers are doing a phenomenal job at what they do and many go their entire professional career without vocalizing their opinion. However, it is time that we start to focus on how we are truly treating those who made it possible for each and every one of us to be here today. Thank you.